So hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So as it turns out, this is going to be the last tutorial on the banking GUI app using Chikinta. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover how to create our deposit and withdrawal functions, which are the two main functions that are going to be used in our Chikinta application. So first off, let's go ahead and take a look at the user requirements that we set ourselves when we started out. I'm going to go ahead and cross off what we've already done. So we've allowed the user to log in in the last tutorial and we have also allowed the user to view balance and personal details so i'm going to cross that off too so in this tutorial i'm going to show you guys how to allow the user to deposit money and update the file as well as allow the user to withdraw money and then this will update in the file for the user now for you guys as a challenge i'm going to leave this bit out i'm not going to do this and i'm going to expect you guys to do it on yourself just so that you guys have a bit of practice so i'm going to let you guys try and figure out how to allow the user to edit his personal details in the file that they are stored Right, cool. So to begin with, I'm going to go in my folder, Banking um, GUI app. And then in there, I have my Yohan file where I've stored my details at the moment. Right, so if I double click that, and if I open it in Notepad, as you see right here, my username is Yohan, the second line of my password is password, my age is 21, gender male, and zero is the balance. So that's the storage that stores our accounts. And this is the code that we got to in the last tutorial. Right, so in the last tutorial, we were able to use our login buttons to pretty much log in into accounts that already exists. And we also had validation. So if I logged in and if the password is incorrect, then it says that. And if I type in an account that isn't valid, it says account not found. All right, so let me log in quickly just to show you what we did last time. Login. And if I clicked on personal details, it tells us all the personal details for this account that are in the text file or the plain file. Right, so in this tutorial, we're going to be adding some life to this deposit and withdraw buttons because right now they just say deposit and withdraw when you click on them. So if you haven't watched the first two tutorial guys, I really recommend you do because those two are the base of this application. I'll be listing the link to the two tutorials on this series from the beginning so part one and part two in the description so go ahead and watch those first and then come to this tutorial so without further ado let's begin so let's go ahead and navigate to the functions deposit and withdraw so we're going to do deposit first because it's a bit easier than withdraw and then the withdraw bit is going to be a lot easier so let's start by erasing this line that says print deposit and now i'm going to create some variables in here so variables now in the deposit, we need the user to enter an amount that they want to deposit. So I'm going to create a global variable called amount. I'm going to create a global variable called deposit notif. So this deposit notif is basically going to be a label that's going to be created later down the tutorial, which is going to update the user on whether the deposit was a success or whether it was a failure or any other information related or, or in regards to the deposit. Whereas the amount is going to be the variable that pretty much um, temporarily stores the information about the amount that's being stored or that's being deposited. So I also need to do another one. So global current balance label. So as it may already suggest, this label right here is going to show the user their current balance and it's going to keep updating as the user keeps making more deposits or withdrawals. Cool. So that's just for the labels. Now let's create the actual um, variable. So amount equals string well. Now you guys may argue that it's a number and we're going to have to do operations with it. But let's begin by um, assigning it to a string variable and later on we'll convert it to a float which means that we can have decimals. Obviously, we're going to need decimals, so we're going to be creating a floating point later and converting this into that. Cool. So first off, what we want to do is go ahead and open our file that stores all the details so that we actually know what our starting balance is. So in the last tutorial, we had globalized this login name variable from the login session so global login name so whatever name the user uses right here and when it's validated and all successful we're able to reuse that name again in our deposit so that we actually know which user file to open so we're going to be opening the um, login name file so whichever user has just logged in successfully we're going to be opening that um, file we're going to be opening that in read mode because we only need to be reading right now 
um, then we're going to do something like file data equals file.read so that's going to read the data from the file now user details equals file data dot split oops what's going on with my typing forward slash n so what this is going to do it's going to return an array which is going to store all the details on a separate line so name is going to be on the zeroth line of the array um, the age is going to be on the first i mean the password is going to be on the first line and so on so if i do details balance um, i'm going to assign that to user details four that's because I know that the fourth item in this array is going to be the balance because the balance is pretty much the last item that we saved in our file. And then when this is split, it pretty much um, takes each line and then stores it as a list, as an item in that list. So I've already experimented and I know that my fourth item in this list, user details, is going to end up being the user's balance, so the current balance. Cool. So we have the current balance now. Let's go ahead and create our screen. So deposit screen. Um, let's go ahead and call this deposit screen equals uh, top level master which means we're going to create a pop-up window um, based off our master screen now let's go ahead and give this screen a title of deposit and after that we're going to have to create a few labels so label first label is going to be deposit Screen. so that's what we're placing it at then the text is going to be equal to deposit so d-e-p-o-s-i-t font is going to be calibri uh, let's close that comma 12 and then we're going to use grid to place it on our screen so row is going to be zero it's going to be placed in the first row of our GUI sticky equals north which means it's going to be placed in the center and padding y equals 10 which means it's going to have 10 units of space from the top and bottom cool let me show you how it looks like login and if i go to johan password and login uh, deposit and we have no errors perfect so as you see right here we have um a nice little deposit thingy showing up right here and it has a padding of 10 units from the top and bottom and it's placed on our first row perfect so now let's go ahead and add a few more labels which we're going to be needing so we're going to be needing the user to actually type in their the amount that they want to enter so before that we're going to need another label that shows the user their current balance so we're going to have to name this label so current balance label equals I'm just going to copy and paste now because can't be asked and it saves time too so copy and paste text is going to be changed to current balance uh, let's use a colon and a pound sign and then we'll do a plus details balance so it's going to show the user the initial or starting balance of whatever is being read from the file so we have this detail balance details balance right here being read from the file so from the user's file so we're going to be showing the current balance of the user in the start now we're going to have to place this uh, on a grid so current balance label dot grid um, we have to place this row equals one comma sticky equals west because we want it to be placed at the very left cool let's go ahead and create another label which is going to allow the user to actually enter the amount that they want to deposit so i'm going to copy and actually i do have a copied version already so i'm going to change the text to amount and add one of these colons and then we're going to have to change the dot grid because we're going to place it on our screen row equals two comma sticky equals west once again i wanted to stick to the very left of the screen that's why i'm putting it to the west now we need another label which is deposit notif so i'm assigning these labels to variables because we're going to be configuring them later to um, change their information and in this label we don't need to enter any information yet font equals oops font equals calibri comma 
forth. And then the only thing you gotta do is deposit motive.grid. And I'm gonna place this on row four. You guys might say, why row four? Why not row three? That's because we still have another button that's gonna be placed above this. Um, so that's why I've skipped a line, I mean a number. And then pad y equals five. Perfect, cool. So that's our deposit notif done. And it's a global variable, so we can um, pretty much access it from anywhere when we need it to. So that's our deposit notif label done as well. Let's go ahead and do our entry now. So entry, we're gonna have only one entry for the amount to be entered. So entry deposit screen and our text variable as discussed in the start is going to be equal to amount. So that's gonna, that variable is gonna temporarily store the amount that we're entering in there. And then dot grid row equals two, comma column equals one. Cause I want it to be on the same row as the label for it. So row equals two, row equals two, but column equals one. Oh, now lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and add the button that's gonna be um, running all of this stuff. So this button is going to be placed on deposit screen once again, comma, the text is going to be called finish and then font equals, I should have just copied and pasted, but that's fine, 12 and we're going to place this row equals three. So remember I said I saved that space for this button right here, sticky equals rest and then padding y equals five. Cool. I'm not giving it a command yet because we're going to do that in a moment. So let's run this and let's see if it actually works. So login, Johan and password. It's going to be surprising if there's no errors. Oh, as I said, I just called it. Uh, tuple object has not. So deposit not a dot grid. Hmm. I probably have added an extra bracket or something like that. All right, so I forgot to put the... I'm not even sure what I did here. So this is meant to have a bracket right here. That is meant to be deposit screen. And then the end is going to have an, a bracket. So if you guys could fix this line right here. Sorry about that. Uh, let's run this again. And hopefully we won't have no errors. But every time I say that, I kind of jinx myself. Password, login, deposit. Okay, I didn't jinx myself this time. Cool, so it's not the best looking GUI, but hey, it is something. We have something showing up right here. We have the deposit showing up at the top. We have the current balance equals zero down here, and we have an amount um, entry right here. I'll leave the designing up to you guys so you can design it to however you like. So essentially, there's some space at the bottom underneath the finish button, because that's the hidden notif um, label that we have. That label is going to show whether the transaction was successful or not successful. So when I click on finish, that label should show up later. Cool. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to assign this button to a function or a command in this case. So command equals, um, what did we call it? We called it finish deposit. Cool. So we're going to have to create a function that's going to be called finish deposit. Now what that function is going to do is it's going to grab these values. So it's going to grab the amount. It's going to grab the uh, deposit notif. It's going to grab the uh, current balance label. And first off, what it's going to do is it's going to find out what the current balance is. So it's going to read the user's file, find out what the current balance is. Then it's going to take the amount and add it onto that current balance. Once it's added it on, it's going to save it back to that text file so that the amount is now updated so that the user balance has updated to the amount that it has deposited. And then it's going to update the deposit notif to say that transaction success. And it's going to update the current balance label to display the most um, updated balance. Cool. So that may have sounded confusing, but if you understood, perfect. Um, what we're going to do next is I'm going to create a new function called um, def uh, finish deposit and then what we're going to do first in this function is we need to actually verify whether the amount being entered is a valid um, if there's actually anything being entered in there so if I did if amount 
dot get and now remember that amount is just a temporary variable that we had that was storing the amount in the last one so we have to use the dot get method to actually get the data so we're saying if amount is blank so if the user doesn't enter anything and the button just gets pressed by accident we're gonna do we're not gonna crash but we're gonna do deposit notif which is a um, the empty label that we created to show notifications on the previous screen deposit notif.config uh, we're gonna add some text to it and that's gonna equals to text equals um, amount is required cool and then we're gonna make the foreground equals to red because it's a, sort of an error and then we also need to check whether this amount that's being given to us is less than zero because if it is zero or less than zero we're not going to deposit that because we can't really deposit negative items or negative values so we're going to say if now remember what i said before we're storing it as a string but we're in, uh, in order to do math with it we're going to have to change it to a float so if float amount.get so now this amount is going to be changed into a decimal number is less or equal to zero then we do deposit notif.config um, text equals negative currency is not accepted so this is sort of just us making sure that we're covering all the different validation rules that I can think of at the moment and I forgot to say before, but at the end of it, you need to do a return because we're not using an else statement. So do a return at the first if statement as well. So we need two if statements, one to check whether the entry actually has information. And the second one to check if the value given is equal to zero or less. Cool. Now let's get into the actual code. So we're going to create a new variable called file, uh, which is going to be equal to open. And once again, we're going to be using the global variable called login name to find out who just logged in. Then we need to open the file in R plus mode because R plus means basically read and write. So we can read and write to this file because we're going to be writing to this file to update the balance. So file data equals file.read. Sort of just repeating ourselves right now. Details equals file data.split. So this will take each line and save it as an item in the array. And now current balance equals details four because I know that the fourth item in my array is going to be my current balance, which is read from the file. Now we have a new um, variable called updated balance, which is going to equals to current balance. And then we take the updated balance each time, and we do equals updated balance plus whatever amount is given to us and we need to change the amount into a float because it's a math operation we can't just add a number to a string cool so now each time there is um, an amount that's being added it's going to be updated and stored in our updated balance now we still need to write this information to our file that's what we're going to be doing next so the file data that we read from the file is technically now old because we have an updated balance so what we need to do with that file is we're going to have to replace the data in that file. So we create, we're going to overwrite the file data variable. So file data equals file data. So we're overwriting now dot replace. Replace is a function that pretty much looks for a string and then replaces it with whatever you want. So we want to look for the string called current balance, which is the old um, unupdated balance that is going to be stored in the user file and then we want to update it with um, updated balance now we've added str onto it because we want it to be converted to string before being um, saved as text because in text files we're going to have an error if we try saving it as a number cool so that's our file data overwritten with the most um, recent balance and now we got to just empty the previous file so that we can write the new data and the most updated data to it. So we need to do something called file.seek and then file.truncate. So file.truncate, G-R-U-N-C-A-T-E and zero, because we want it to start from zero. And then file.write, the most recent and overwritten file data. So this is going to store, and then finally file.close. Uh, so that's going to store the most um, recent balance. And 
that should do it. And then once, once that's done, we need to update the current balance um, label that we created, which was global, with the most recent balance. So text equals current balance. Uh, we're going to use a colon, uh, dollar, I mean pound sign, string, plus str, because it's a concatenation, we can't just add a number to it, because the updated balance is in the format of a float, we need to change it to an str, because we're concatenating, and foreground equals green, because it's not an error, so an update has just happened, because current balance goes to green, and then it will show up with the most recent um, account balance after adding whatever we've just deposited to it. And then deposit notif.config text equals balance updated. So previously we used this to display errors. We're also going to be using it to show whether it's been a success or not. Green. And that's about it. Let's go ahead and run our deposit function. I'll be surprised if there's no errors. Um, let's have a look. Let's add my name in there, Johan, and password. So far, so good. And deposit. So far, so good. Cool. Let's enter a value of minus one. Finish. Uh, negative currency is not accepted. As we added our validation, it's bang on. It says negative currency is not accepted. If I enter zero, it's going to say the same thing again because it's it's pretty much negative because we can't enter. We can't make a deposit of zero. If I enter 0.1 and click on finish, we have an error as expected. Updated balance equals updated balance plus float amount dot get. Um, let's see. Oh, I forgot that. So on this line right here where we update the balance, this updated balance thingy right here is in string format because it's just been read from an array so we need to make that a float as well forgot to do that so we're gonna have to do that so that it's an actual number and they can be added otherwise python just assumes we're trying to concatenate a string with a float which is not what we're trying to do that was um a minor bug which is sorted out now cool password and let's make a deposit current balance is zero which is perfect make a deposit of 0.1 uh seek takes at least oh i forgot to do seek zero as well because we wanted to seek from zero my god these are like the most um minor mistakes ever but oh well that's fine password login uh let's go ahead and deposit an amount of 0.1 please don't give me any errors perfect and as you see right here we did a deposit of 0.1 and then when we said finish balance has updated now if i do finish again 0.2 cool now let's do a bigger amount let's do 1000 pounds for example finish and then it says balance updated and the balance is now 1000 pounds and two pence cool so if i finish again it says 2000 pounds and two pence so pretty cool stuff it's now updating whatever value we add in there it's got validation too so if i try adding zero it will say no negative values if i try adding minus one no negative currency again so you might argue whether this 2,000 pounds 2 pence is actually saved into the user file. And the answer is it is. So if I close this off and if I log in again and if I have the same current balance of 2,000 pounds and 2 pence or whatever it was, as long as it's not zero. Why did I type in login in there? You're... So when I log in, if I check my personal details, it says 2000 pounds and 2 pence which was the last deposit we made so it's perfectly working now it's stored it in the file so each time it's updated it's storing in the file which is what our code did now the withdraw function is going to be pretty much just copying and pasting the deposit function but we're going to replace the updated balance with a minus because we're going to be taking away from the current balance rather than adding to it so this is going to be the easier bit so what we're going to do is we're going to copy the entire bit for deposit. So from start till end, so copy the whole thing for deposit and we're going to have to change a few things. Now we're going to go in a withdraw function right here, paste it in there. And now when we paste that in there, we're going to have to change the variable name so that they don't conflict with each other. So first off, it's going to, we're going to add withdraw to literally everything that we have. So I'm going to copy this withdraw and I'm going to copy this withdraw word right here. 
so that I can quickly just paste it and then everything should be sorted out. Now current account, uh, current balance label can stay the same. Withdraw amount and withdraw notice will change. Uh, now we gotta change the amount to withdraw amount. Um, there we go. The file stays the same, file data is the same, user details is the same, details balance is the same. Now this will change to withdraw screen of course, because it's not the deposit screen anymore. Same here. And then we got to change this um, placement for all the labels from deposit screen to withdraw screen. It's a bit annoying to do, but it's fine. Now we have to change this to um, withdraw screen as well. Um, and that's fine. Now label needs to be on withdraw screen. That's perfect. And now this deposit notif will change into withdraw notif as well as changing the deposit screen to withdraw screen. So if you copy the word withdraw and just we just gotta keep pasting it in wherever is required. Now entry is on deposit screen that changes off to withdraw screen. And we also need to change the text variable to withdraw amount. All right, cool, underscore. Then we also need to change this last button to withdraw screen. And the command is going to be finish withdraw. Perfect. So let's quickly create a function called finished withdraw. Now we're literally doing the same thing that we did for the deposit. We're creating a little function for this to be run whenever the user clicks on finish. Whenever they've entered the amount they want to withdraw and clicked on finish. Now we're going to call this uh, finish withdraw. And in here we're going to have to copy and paste the finish deposit because it's literally going to be the same. All that's going to change is we're going to add a minus in the updated um, balance thingy. Cool. So to do finish with raw right so in the finish with raw we have arrived in here let's paste it off now if we still need to do if amount equals a speech marks then um, then we need to produce an error but we need to change this to withdraw amount because that's the name that we had withdraw amount let's copy this again Let's copy it without the underscore actually. Withdraw. And now this deposit notif changes to withdraw notif. Um, then we have the same file. Then we have file data, which is fine. Data is fine. Um, details is fine. Current balance is fine. Updated balance is okay. Um, updated balance equals current balance. So right here, before the balance could be updated what we actually need to do is add a bit more validation in here because we need to actually um, be able to find out whether the amount that is being withdrawn is greater than the amount that already exists because we don't want the user to be able to go in overdraft or minus at the moment so we need to prevent the user from withdrawing more money than they actually have so we do if float withdraw amount is okay dot get brackets another bracket is greater than float current balance which is the balance that's being read from the file then we do withdraw uh notif dot config uh text equals insufficient funds because obviously there's not sufficient funds for this if you guys want to enable overdraft, you can do that quite easily by changing the limits um, using which this message appears. Foreground equals red because I want it to be an error. And we use the return as well. Now, after that, the updated balance is fine. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Updated balance is fine. The file data is fine. File.seek is fine. Now we have to change the updated balance actually. All you need to change in here is change the plus sign to minus because we are withdrawing so we're taken away and the float updated balance stays the same but we need to change the amount to 
with raw underscore amount dot get because we're using the draw amount and not the amount from the deposit. Now in file data equals file dot replace, current balance stays the same um, and updated balance stays the same. Then we tr uh, truncate, then we write the new data to the file after removing the amount and then we close. Uh, in here the current balance label is okay, that's perfectly fine. But we need to change the deposit notif into withdraw notif. If I paste that in there, and if I save and run, okay, so hopefully we don't have any errors. Might have jinxed myself, jinxed myself, but let's find out. Um, username and password is password. Very secure. Uh, withdraw. Okay, so far no errors. We have our current balance showing up completely fine. So let's try going negative minus one. And it says do, 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 if float amount. Okay, okay, I forgot to do that. Cool. So in here, if I forgot to type in withdraw amount, withdraw amount. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. If withdraw amount, that was my mistake. And this deposit notif will change to withdraw notif as well. Cool. So hopefully we don't have any errors now. Password login with raw minus one. Negative currency not accepted, so same validation as before. If I put zero, we have the same message. Let's try and withdraw one pound. And as you see right here, current balance is 1,999.2 pence, which is what happens when you take away one. If I take away another one, 1,998. Now let's try and see if our validation works, right? Let's take away 1998. Let's say we just bought a new car or something or paid off insurance. Now this amount is very weird, but it's like a decimal number which you can convert into um, having just two digits, so 0 0.20 later if you like to, you can research that. Um, now I'm going to try and go into minus. So we have technically 20 pence in our account right now. So if I go ahead and type in 30, it should prevent us from doing so. Finish and it says insufficient funds because I'm trying to take up 30 pounds and I'm pretty much short 29 pounds and 80 pence. If I try to take out 20 pence, it still says insufficient funds. Let's try taking out 19 pence. Insufficient funds. Oh wait, I'm trying. My bad. 0 0.20. Uh, if I try to take up 0.20, it gives me this um, weird, weird value because obviously this is in like, this is way um, in the minus region after we've taken out. So I'm going to do 0.1 insufficient funds because obviously this is this is a very low amount, which is why we need to kind of round the number up. So you guys can go ahead and do that. You can round it up. I'm going to quickly make a quick deposit in here just to fix this off and we have 100 pounds in here which is fine um, once you have rounded your number up this should this error shouldn't persist so you can use the roundup function in python which would be pretty easy to find so that's kind of like a task for you guys um, also we need to change this so if i go to withdraw we need to change the actual title to withdraw because otherwise it's a bit fake that we've copied and pasted withdraw Cool. So the only issue there was that the um, float, floats were showing us pretty much all the decimal points that could exist. But you can pretty much round that up to the closest two decimals quite easily by looking it up on Google or something like that. So your task right now is to, let's take a look, your task is to allow the user to edit personal details um, and round up um, the updated balance to the nearest two decimals cool so that's your task guys if you manage to somehow complete the task just um, um, notify me in the comment section because that will make me feel real proud because I've um, helped you learn something and you were able to implement that to do something else and unfortunately that puts an end to the creating a um, custom banking GUI app using Python and Tikinta. Hope you guys have thoroughly enjoyed this series and learned something new and would able to be used this um, information in the future. 
Um, also guys, thank you so much for all the support you guys have been showing. The last tutorial was absolutely smashed by 100 views in a day. So if you guys could keep sharing in the same way, it would be amazing. If you guys would also like to support the channel directory, I mean directly, you can do so by either purchasing uh, one of the custom emojis or buying a highlighted message. I'm not forcing anyone to do so, but if you like to, you're more than feel more than free to do so. It really helps me out. Um, also guys, we also have a little Discord channel going on right now with about 20 plus members, which is really fun. We, um, we pretty much just chill in there and like discuss stuff about programming and other future ideas that could be useful. So I'm going to link the Discord and other links to my socials in the description along with other helpful tutorials and a part 1 and part 2 of this. If you guys are interested, go ahead and join them or watch them. And guys, thank you as always. I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace out.